Intel's role in the IoT is very simple. If you look at what we've done historically in markets, we look for the opportunity to create a platform that allows for scale. And when you provide scale, you accelerate time to market, time to deployment. So we have a large focus on working with the ecosystem to define what that platform looks like from sensor to cloud. We're using applications and efforts like the Innovation Labs here in Munich, where we have regional opportunities to understand what that ecosystem looks like, quickly deploy that implementation, and then roll it out and scale it to the rest of the IoT community. This is our smart worker and it's a whole cloud solution. That means it's not only the hardware, we have also a software integrated to uh, communicate with different kind of supporting engineers helping the poor guy in front of the problem. We have a high quality camera on that, you know, because the eye is looking on the problem. What we are producing is big data. So all the video references and all the, the pictures and the documents shared to solve the problem. We develop also the same see-through technology on a glass. And you can do video conferencing, communication and also augmented reality. This is a prototype where we finalize this system uh, mid, the mid of next year. And uh, we are close to Intel that we have the next technology steps in these products, but also in these future products. Therefore, IoT is very important on the sales uh, perspectives, on the technical perspectives, and they are also helping us in marketing worldwide, using their uh, sales and marketing infrastructure to spread out these systems and to help their customers with new IoT solutions. With IoT devices, I, I think we, we unleash an automation market into a Generation Y who wouldn't have the potential to buy these devices five or ten years ago. Our company is focused as an OEM supplier. We build one, one cogwheel in the whole engine part, but it's the cogwheel that solves interoperability. So every company participating in this lab has a need for our software. I want to give you a little example. So I'm pushing a classic 60 watt bulb to consume more energy. I have a display. I told my mom, we started to send a push notification of her energy peaks to her sister. Now it becomes a natural embarrassment. Her sister walks up to her, she says, Root, you used 8.5 kilowatt on a single day. How is this possible? It alternates her behavior because she feels exposed about the energy consumption. We developed a software for remote asset management. Basically what we've done is it's an edge analytics software residing on the gateway itself and collecting sensor data and pre-analyze it already at the edge. You connect basically to sensors like temperature sensors, uh, humidity sensors, doors or even cameras. Our software resides in the gateway and this gateway uh, connects to I.O. modules, input-output modules, which are then connected to different sensors like tilt sensors, I can just uh, tilt the sensor and it raises an alert and somebody that basically uh, just demonstrates that somebody's tampering with like generator or battery on site. We have like the intelligence, we provide the intelligence like the, the business or the edge intelligence which is running inside and Intel uh, provides the bottom layer basically, the hardware, you know, and also like the, the OS. That's like the starting point of a successful partnership, right? Because here is where we, where we try things, where we see, okay, that, that could work, that can't work, right? So you define also which hardware platform is needed, what is needed from Intel, what is needed from Azati, you know? And then you can build together a successful product or a solution and go out to the market. So basically, this, this center here is an enabler for us. So when we look at the role of the Intel Ignition Labs, they're really a cornerstone, why? I had mentioned the need for a horizontal capability to enable scale. That's what we call the Intel IoT platform. However, you need to make a specific implementation for either the market segment or the geography slash region. So within the Ignition Labs, we have the ability to take that horizontal platform capability and really augment it with the local innovators and the local suppliers targeted to a specific market segment implementation and really provide that scale that's needed to accelerate deployment. This demonstrator has mainly been developed by Intel, BMW, KIT, TU, Wind River. 
showcasing the automotive aspect of the Aramis project, funded by the German Ministry of Research and Education. And the top, we have the different uh, operating systems running, so we can notice that there is one Ubuntu actually running, simultaneously as an Android operating system. Both of these are actually uh, sharing the same resources, which are the CPU, but the hypervisor is actually dedicating different cores of that same CPU to the different virtual machines. As soon as the car starts moving, then the dashboard activates and has all these indicators related to driving. And later on, we have the railroad crossing, which actually displays the fact that we're allowing for some customization through the download of applications within Android on the car. So by downloading an application, we're trying to showcase that that application could have access to information from the infrastructure and would help the, uh, the, the driver understand what's happening around him through the, the infrastructure communicating with the car. In this case, that would be the amount of time that would be required to wait until the railroad crossing gets free again and the driver is available for driving. The energy grid was designed almost like 100 years ago and it was designed to, to have a central big power stations in the middle and the energy is taking off at the edges. And now with the advent of the alternative energy sources, uh, photovoltaic, wind energy, which they are all connected to the edges and basically make the energy flow in the wrong direction, which causes a lot of stress. We have installed a system here in our lab, in our physical building that was originally designed together with Aeon. We have developed a complete stack that would be installed in, in these second level substations consisting of energy sensors, local uh, logic, APC basically, and then this data is transferred uh, to a backend, collected, and then uh, we have here a display of that data. We did not only focus on a certain aspect like the gateway, uh, but we really could incorporate everything, the sensor, the gateway, the security stack, and also the backend. As you can see, the data is really running on a, on a Cloudera, on a Hadoop cluster that we have here. So it's really about integration, so the IoT lab is really a place to integrate different verticals, different, uh, different produ uh, products and so on. Adicent is a world leading product service providing company. We work with Intel for the last seven years and we are the preferred vendor for Intel in providing services uh, in various verticals. We have our own smart community uh, solution which we have uh, ported on Intel's Edison platform. Our IoT uh, gateway software interfaces with the uh, cloud application using uh, 1M2M standards uh, based interface. So using this dashboard, the uh, community administrator can control the devices, for example, switch on or switch off the street lights, uh, the water pumps, washers and HVAC. It's a good uh, platform where a lot of ecosystem partners come together and try and uh, address different parts of uh, the whole end-to-end -end application. And it's very important for a company like us to try and understand the end-to-end -end, uh, process and, and play our part. Why do I believe in the hype of the Internet of Things? Very simply. One, the support of the multinationals. Two, the investment dollars from the VC community into startups, whether it be hardware, software, platform, services companies. And then finally, the business value that we're seeing extracted out of the Internet of Things, whether it be in operational savings or additional revenue or in some cases just social impact I believe are going to be the drivers that really accelerate the adoption and the opportunity around the Internet of Things.